is ready. Beating one, beating two. Inside the 22, and he's flying. Ready scores his second try in the space of 60 seconds. Played back to Mount here, to Aleph. Picked up nicely by Aleph and given to Bates, and then to Fairfax. Fairfax, the brilliant Eastern Suburbs fullback is in. And the arm goes into the air. to Leichhardt Oval in Sydney and the 1978 AMCO Cup Final between St George and Eastern Suburbs. Hello there, I'm Ray Warren and a very warm welcome to you watching us right throughout Australia and in fact in New Zealand, the 1978 Cup Final. Yes, we've come to the, the big night of the year when of course we'll see the Dragons of St George opposing the Roosters of Eastern Suburbs. It's quite a delightful night in Sydney for this time of year. Quite a strong breeze blowing away from the grandstand end and uh, quite a big crowd here at Leichhardt to witness the 1978 and in fact the fifth playing of an AMCO Cup final. A near capacity crowd banking onto the hills on the scoreboard side and of course the grandstands here at Leichhardt also filled to capacity. Tonight combining the team prize money of $60,000 for the winners and $17,500 for the losers plus the players' awards and viewers' prizes will be distributing between now and the end of tonight's telecast over $100,000 in prize money. So let's now have a look at the way that these two sides made this memorable occasion at Leichhardt in 1978. The St George side, seeded through to the fourth round, defeated Newtown 35-11, the quarter-final defeating Parramatta 27-9, and the semi-final against Cronulla 21-7. Eastern Suburbs also seeded through to the fourth round, defeated Western Suburbs 16-10, the quarter-final over the mighty Illawarra side, 18 points to four, and the semi-final defeating Manly by 14 points to two. And so now let's have a look at the team rundowns. There's the St George side, identical to the one you saw defeat Cronulla in the semi-final and leading that side again tonight, the man who really left a stamp on the semi-final, number eight, the lock forward, Rod Reddy. St George, of course, coached by Harry Barth. In the meantime, Eastern Suburbs have not been blessed with as much luck. Out of the side today, failing their physicals, at lunchtime, Arthur Beetson and Ron Coote. Now, here are the changes and the rearrangement is on your screen. Kevin Stevens moving to lock in place of Coote. Fulton at captain now moves into the 5-8 spot in place of Stevens. And Al Alan Power moves into Fulton's spot at centre. Grant Hedger comes into the reserves uh, with uh, Arthur Beetson's withdrawal. The referee for tonight's match is Jack Danzey, and the fifth Amco Cup final will be underway in just a few minutes' time. Past winners in 1974. Inaugural year, the Cinderella story, Western Division. In 75, they took out the double crown, Eastern Suburbs, and in fact, they have the best record of any team in the AMCO Cup. In 76, it was the year of the Tiger when Balmain defeated North Sydney, and in 77, who'll ever forget the memorable Cup final when the Magpies knocked over the Roosters by that mere one point. 78? Well, that's a question mark. Joining me on the commentary team tonight, our regular co-commentator Keith Barnes, a former great rugby league footballer, and joining us tonight, the most famous rugby league commentator of all, and doing his very first AMCO Cup telecast, and in fact his very first television co-commentary, none other than Frank Hyde, and it's great to have you on the program. Thank you very much, Ray. Nice to be here. Well, Frank, you've seen a lot of league in 1978 and a topsy-turvy year. How do you see this one going? Well, if you have to go for somebody, I go for St George. Uh, and I do that because they, uh, they have a singleness of purpose tonight. This is the only thing they have on their mind tonight, and that is the AMCO Cup Final. Whereas Eastern Suburbs have a couple of other things, as you are well aware, on their mind. The uh, match next week against uh, Manly on Sunday. And uh, uh, in addition to that, there's a little bit of age in that Eastern Suburbs side. Experience, uh, I, I agree. But with uh, Harris and uh, Fulton and O'Reilly in there, uh, I think they're going to be hard put to keep out this young and energetic and virile side St George tonight. I think that the four quarters will assist them, but uh, whether it will be enough to uh, sway it Eastern Suburbs way, I doubt it. 
Keith Barnes. I can't uh, predict with any degree of confidence whatsoever, but I'm leaning the opposite way. I'm going for Eastern Suburbs. I think their style is well geared to Amco Cup football. Uh, I think their tactics are good. I think they've got a little bit more flair in the back. Certainly there's age there, but there's a bit of brilliance too when you consider the likes of Fairfax and Bobby Fulton in the 5-8 spot. And, uh, of course, the current uh, superstar leader in Kevin Hastings. I think their forwards are a tremendously uh, good defensive unit. And I think if any problem is going to come from St George, it's going to come down in the middle of the field. But there's six tacklers in there from Eastern Suburbs, and it's going to be a tremendous clash. I go for St George. I think they've hit the type of form that took out the 77 Premiership for them at the right time as far as Amco Cup football is concerned. A scintillating performance last Wednesday, quite a reasonable performance at the weekend, and I favour St George very, very narrowly. Before we take this next commercial break and then come back to the kickoff, we have an announcement to make that we believe to be of extreme importance and a very exciting one from an Amco Cup point of view. We'd like to now cross to screen a statement pre-recorded of course by Mr. Kevin Humphreys, the president of the New South Wales League and he's joined on this particular um, statement they released earlier in the, the day or earlier in the week with Mr. Ian Kennan, general manager of Channel 10. Unfortunately I cannot be in attendance at the cup final tonight because of a commitment overseas for International Rugby League. However by pre-recording this statement it gives me the Wonderful pleasure to announce to everybody tonight on this channel that we have re-signed a further five-year contract for the AMCO Cup with the O10 Network and AMCO as the sponsors. We in Rugby League have been delighted over the past five years with the wonderful cooperation that we have achieved with AMCO and Channel 10. We've been able to take Rugby League out of the major cities, being Sydney and Brisbane, into country areas in each of the states. The funds that this new contract will make available will, will allow us to continue doing this for the next five years. To Ian Cannon, thanks Ian for a wonderful five years. I know the next five is going to be better. To Cook Vincent and all the people from AMCO, you're doing a great job for Rugby League and I'm looking forward to working again with you for the next five years. Thanks Kevin. Um, I'd like to particularly endorse your remarks regarding the successful association between AMCO and the League and Channel 10. Uh, this year uh, the Cup has again proved enormously popular with our viewers and in the five years history of the Cup we have achieved the highest ratings uh, in the five year period against some very very strong opposition. I'd like to close by uh, wishing the two teams uh, competing tonight all the best and uh, the other teams in the league, the opportunity that they will reach these heights in over the next five years. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ian. I endorse those remarks and my very, very sincere best wishes to Eastern Suburbs and St George tonight. They're two great clubs and they thoroughly deserve to be in this great final. Kevin Humphreys, President of the New South Wales League and Ian Kennan, General Manager of Channel 10, releasing the statement that a five-year contract has been signed between the league and Channel 10 for the telecasting of the AMCO Cup. That's great news. We'll take that break I was talking of and then back for the kickoff to the 1978 final. The kickoff to the 1978 Cup final brought to you through the O10 network by AMCO, the makers of Bogarts and Australia's largest jeans manufacturer. Placing the ball at centre field, Bob Fulton. As this big crowd now starts to warm to what they're about to see over the next 80 minutes. Electric atmosphere, a sea of red, white and blue and red and white. As Danzy calls time on and Fulton strikes his ball down towards the grandstand end and that sets the 78 Cup final in motion and here's Carney coming away towards the 22. And it's Eastern Suburbs with the superstar leader Hastings now getting possession from the St George side. The Roosters immediately onto the attack but it's uh, O'Reilly losing it and Jeffries has possession for St George. Jeffries playing it, playing it back to John Jansen, and Jansen, who had a very big start to the game last uh, Wednesday night. His performance tapered off a fraction in the second half, but undoubtedly Harry Bath will be looking to him for a big one tonight. As the ball floats along the back line, and luckily that was, that was picked up there by Robert Finch for St. George. This is Trudgett. Played back to Reddy. George Grant, the goal-kicking prop forward from St. George, out to the 22 taken around the legs by Bobby Fulton skippering the side tonight and Reddy puts the boot to it 
going down towards Russell Fairfax and it's bouncing end on end inside the 22. Fairfax is uh, back inside his own 22 line but he has Schubert with him. Draws the defence, gives it to Schubert, then back to Fairfax, juggling it and then evading one, beating another. Fairfax down towards the halfway before Graham Quinn makes the tackle on the elusive Russell Fairfax. Taking it up as Roy Saylor now. Play it back to Mountie, right on the halfway mark. Bob O'Reilly. Riley to play it. No gain in ground made by the eastern suburb side. It's Fulton getting it across the ground to Hastings and now on the left of the field. Again, Roy Saylor. Fulton. Stevens. And on the burst, Alan Power. About eight metres inside St George's territory. Fulton. End on end, but Butler's there. He has it covered. 10 metres out from his line, coming out to the 22. And Butler tackled by Hastings and O'Reilly. Playing it back to Soladimi. Dummy half is Jeffries. Now with Craig Young. Grant switching the play across to Stone and then to Reddy. And coming in from the wing is Mullins. All the publicity leading up to this game is how Eastern Suburbs are going to contain Reddy. And 10 metres outside the 22 on the last tackle. Takani. Torpedo punt going down over the head of Schubert. This could find touch. No, it's actually stood on its end. And Schubert. To play at about 10 metres from the halfway. Yes, this looks like it's going to be particularly rugged. It looks as like if both teams, though, have settled down after that initial minute or so when we saw a few handling errors. Uh, and the, uh, we haven't had a, a, a real scrum, well, we haven't had a scrum as yet, Frank. No, but the uh, Eastern Suburbs forwards are taking it right up to them and also looking for support. But St George are not doing that. They were hemmed in on their own uh, quarter line there and uh, they were playing one out, you notice. The forward just taken up and uh, taking the tackle in addition. Eastern Suburbs, and again it's Alan Power making a good run, and Hastings dropping it. That could have been a chance for Eastern Suburbs. It was certainly a chance on that occasion. Another handling error, and it's St. George in possession. Midway between the 22 and the halfway, it's out to Trudget. Butler is the dummy half. Harris, one tackler with Mossman. Jeffries. Young, Finch, O'Reilly over the top. Rod Reddy, Jansen coming on the inside. It goes on the outside though to Graham Quinn and back to Jeffries. Last tackle coming up for the Saints now. No score and we're at the fourth minute of the first quarter. Reddy stabbing for the for the line but it's inside that particular point and it's Fairfax now taken by Mitch Brennan Hubert both teams fully utilizing the six tackles at the moment yeah. through Fulton it's gone back to Michael Mossman Hastings Aleph Left knee heavily bandaged. Member of the 74 schoolboy side uh, that toured England with such great success. Mossman. Taken by Brennan. Electrifying player is Mitch Brennan. And he scored that memorable try down the right flank that puts him well in, uh, in reckoning for the golden try. Trudge it. Another handling lapse there. And it's Eastern Suburbs ball. Fulton to play it. Mounty are running to the left. Turning it back on the right to Hastings. Roy Saylor. Fulton. O'Reilly. The big bear to the halfway. O'Reilly looking for Fairfax, but driven onto that left shoulder by Graham Quinn. Fairfax. Hastings. Fulton. Mackay on the inside, number nine for Eastern Suburbs. Last one coming up for the Tricolors. Fulton.
Stabbing for the touch line. Saradimi has got it. Outside the 22. And possession continues to fluctuate at a very uh, rapid rate at the moment. It's with Young. Up to Reddy and now to trudge it. On his knees, back to Reddy. Looks for Brennan, finds him. Schubert's coming across and bundles him into touch. That's one thing about Eastern Southern's defence, uh, Frank. They're very quick to reformulate, don't they? They That's get back right. into position very yeah. quickly and they just keep plugging those gaps. If they can only do this for the full four quarters, they're going to be hard to beat. Well, they've yeah. shown in uh, matches so far that they are capable of doing it. And uh, I don't think... Uh, I think St George are going to have to go up the middle of the rucks because you notice the flatness with Eastern Southern's defence. They keep moving up and driving them back into the middle. But you notice that uh, St George have weathered that early onslaught, uh, Keith, and they're settling down and starting to play a bit better football now. Co-commentators tonight, Frank Hyde and Keith Barnes on the 78 Cup Final. Carney feeding. St. George ball, ready. Budget. Butler coming up. Ready to ruck up. Carney's calling for it. That's him. Finch throws the dummy. Spirals away from Harris, but gives it back to Jeffries, and he's tackled immediately by Fulton. No big pardons in that one. Young, ready, leveling back and getting it to Stone, the big man up the centre, to the halfway goes Stone. Tackled by Harris, and by Fulton. Now Young, Craig Young looking to unload, he does that to Grant and it's been overrun. Well done by uh, the St George number nine there. And it's still Mitch Brennan, back to Quinn, and down to about 30 metres out from the eastern suburbs line. Young again, the man that started it. Ready. On the inside, it's Robert Stone. Young, a quick pass to Jeffries. Ball to the ground. Grant dives for it. And it's loose, and I think it's at East Ball it is. The Roosters in possession. Mossman. Both teams quick to capitalise on any handling errors, aren't That's they? That's right, yes, but uh, Eastern Suburbs are quick to that loose ball, aren't they? John Mackay. Tried it in Fairfax and a bit of a scuffle up. Damsey quickly kills Fairfax to get away out of it. It's Fulton. Fulton! Fulton! 35 metres out! Draws Butler for Hastings! Look at Brennan! But Hastings scores the first cup try! Magnificent break by Fulton. And there's Hastings, the try scorer, as we pick it up on the Cup Final Amco replay. Fulton split the red and whites over halfway. Then deep inside the territory, he draws Butler. Hastings now sees the goal mouth 10 metres upfield, and Brennan flew from nowhere about one second too late. And he wouldn't have wanted to have been much further either because Brennan was really flying, but uh, Fulton certainly hoodwinked the defence then. Uh, I think St George was certainly anticipating that he was going to move the ball back out across the uh, eastern suburbs flanks, and uh, he saw the gap there, moved away from dummy half, and uh, showed acceleration too to get through the gap, didn't he? And uh, yes. great anticipation by Hastings to follow him through. And what, what beautiful experience shone out there mm. with Fulton taking uh, Butler away and then looking inside and beautifully timed the pass to uh, Hastings. So Stevens from right in front, looking to make it 5-0, and he does that. The crowd roars as Eastern Suburbs draw first blood. 5-0, the scoreline, 10 minutes gone, first quarter. Very important break too, isn't it? 5-0 in 10 minutes of this, uh, what? <laughs> it's going to be a real thriller. That's right. Keith, the way the tackling has been in these first few minutes, you wouldn't believe that a try could be scored from halfway like that. No. Nope. Kick-off time again, Reddy takes it. Down to the try scorer Hastings. And here's Mullins now. Ten metres out from the 22. Stevens. Hastings. Fulton. Aliff. Now to Harris. Taken by Grant. Mackay. Out here, calling them to the blind side. That's probably the foil. He runs himself to the right, and then it's uh, Riley going back on the, the scoreboard side. 
Bailiff. Fulton. Now to Harris. Good tackle, tackle by Grant there. He uh, had right. a big game last week, of course, particularly with his goal kicking, and that could play an important part in tonight's game. And this reversing of play, it's all planned stuff, you know, just taking it out with Aleph wide and sending it back into Fulton again and then to Harris. St. George's scrum going to the right of the field is Trudgett. Looking in vain for support. Jansen. Craig Young calling for it. Mistake by Jeffries. Out to Grant. Unexpected touch of the ball. Young now. Ready. I was just going to say he hasn't been brought into the game very much so far, Ready? He's biding his time. He had That's a real right. blinder last week. Craig Young. Ready. Pinch. Oh. Lost to Stephen. That's how Aston George could lose this game by losing the ball as much as they have. A rally. Hastings again. Aleph. Hastings and Fulton. Now Fairfax. Picked up by Soradini, and that could have been a chance for St. George. There yes. was no one at home. It certainly was not in that particular uh, position. It was a planned move, of course, but the ball came a little bit slowly to Fulton there when he switched it to Fairfax, and the St. George defence was aware of it. Jansen. Western Suburbs standing right up on St. George and putting them to ground. It's with Young. A real danger man for Eastern Suburbs. It's Craig Young. To let the ball code quickly. They had the overlap out the way out wide there on the right flank. Now Reddy is looking for it on the right of the field. Here's Reddy. Trudgett out of the tackle. He's got Graham Quinn with him, but Fulton's across in cover with Hastings. Now for the last tackle for St. George. We might see the bomb. It's with uh, on the blind side, Jansen, then to Brennan. Back in field at Boston in position. They're attacking that blind side a lot, and I That's think they right. feel that uh, uh, East are a little bit vulnerable over there. They certainly haven't covered it as well as uh, I'm sure they, they coach Arthur Beetson would uh, want them to. But of course, uh, St. George can't capitalise because they're losing possession, Keith. About five times now since the game started. And I think Reddy will need to run wider of the rucks, too. Fulton. Alan Power. Trudgett made that tackle. Now here's Fulton, he'll look for the touchline, it's rolling end on end, and it's going to beat Butler, is it? Yes, it beats Butler. Great kick by Bobby Fulton. He's going to go down 15 metres into St George territory. He's a masterful thinker, isn't he, Fulton? No, no. Uh, his tactical kicking has uh, gained many, many yards for Eastern Suburbs and got them out of a lot of ticklish situations throughout the year, and uh, he's going to be controlling and directing operations around the rucks more than ever now, of course, with Beetson off the field. Fulton. Cuts out Mullins to Harris. There's an overlap being created by Fulton's pass. Harris. Too late. He should have given it straight away. Bad blunder by the big centre. Fulton. He revels in this sort of football, doesn't he? Mm. Fulton. Hastings. Mount here. Eastern Suburbs five. St. George yet to score. Five minutes out from quarter time. Oh, Good tackle by Trudgett. Aleph. Now to Fulton. There goes the bomb. Pressure now to Butler. Fulton's been failed. Butler's lost the third back to Scott. Magnificent Eastern Suburb try. Well, have a look at this, would you? The Bobby Fulton bomb. And you'd swear blind that Butler had this. Up he goes with Carney and Fairfax right over the top. I think Carney got in uh, 
uh, Butler's way there. Yes, but gee, they score a lot of tries like that, don't yes. they? That Fairfax Fulton combination. And I haven't seen anyone get up as high as Fulton does. It looks as if he's got a pole vault up there. <laughs> he gets right up in the air, Fairfax. Fairfax, yeah. yeah. It was in a wonderful position there for uh, Kevin Stevens now, and 10 points in, uh, what, 16 minutes. That's right. It's a wonderful start, and they've certainly uh, set St. George right back on their heels. They've had two opportunities, and they've come up with two tries. A kick by Stevens, successful and Eastern Suburbs bowled away. They lead by 10 points to nil now. Two cup finals and two sensational tries by Russell Fairfax. There he is, the man who last year had uh, such a forgettable night. Even though he played super football, tonight, surely it can't happen again. It's Fairfax now, inside the 22. Mullins. Out here. Aliff. That's Mackay. Hastings. Rally. The big man taking some pulling down. Fulton. Variation in tactics. It was Trudgett, though. Yes, he wasn't too happy with that one, I don't think. Played back to Grant. Oh. Knocked on a dummy half and another very costly error for St. George. Important scrum, this one, though, isn't it? Because if they're able to win, if uh, Jeffries does win this one, it'll allow them to uh, mount a little bit of pressure because they haven't really uh, pressured Eastern Suburbs' defences in, in a situation like this. No. Penalty to St. George. It's against the half Hastings. And Grant, with the breeze behind him, should have little trouble in bringing up St. George's first points. Yes, and that's the first penalty of the game, Frank. That's right, yes. Well, the, the pace has been tremendous, you know, and uh, uh, just bad handling from uh, St. George. It's featured this for 70 minutes, but uh, uh, penalties uh, are uh, very few and far between. Important kick for Green, too. It's certainly in a, a very kickable position and one that you wouldn't expect a kicker of Green's ability to miss. Uh, very important to get points on the board now for St. George, trailing 10 points to nil. They've, uh, they've got to pick themselves up off the floor and Harry Barth is going to have to do a lot of talking at quarter time. That's right, and having the advantage of this uh, breeze, too, in this first half, St. George. George Grant mopping a bit of perspiration from the brow as he moves in, strikes it, and it's successful. The Dragons are on the way, down 10-2, and quarter time just over 60 seconds away. George Grant. This telecast tonight being beamed practically throughout Australia and into New Zealand. And a very special thank you to the people at Telecom for their assistance in beaming this uh, cup final to Brisbane. few problems associated with that uh, link up but uh, that's been corrected and here's Bobby Fulton about to restart we'll have about 45 seconds of action before quarter time Butler and he's lost it will barely have time to fall. You can't make mistakes in uh, situations no. like that and expect to get away with the game. It's uh, putting a lot of pressure on your teammates when you make mistakes like that. Harry Bath. Study of concentration. Eastern Suburbs have won it. Fulton's won that race for the ball. Seconds remain before the quarter time siren. Fairfax. He realises there's no time left. It's in the air. He's putting Butler back under pressure. Up they go, the Tricolors and the Dragons, and it stacks on the mill. As the siren sounds, it goes dead in goal. Referee Danzi acknowledging now that the siren has gone. And at quarter time in this cup final, Eastern Suburbs 10, St. George 2. Quarter final scoreline in the Amco Cup 1978 final, Eastern Suburbs 10, St. George 2. On the presentation dais tonight, we'll be announcing the player who will have scored sufficient points in tonight's match 
to take out the Singapore Airlines Superstar Award and he'll receive an envelope containing details for a three-week holiday for two to the continent, England and Singapore with Singapore Airlines and Air Tours Australia. A great prize for the superstar of 1978. I just stated, of course, that tonight's man of the match points will determine the superstar for the year, and that's how open the race is at this very moment. Any one of 12 players could be a superstar after tonight. Now, here are the progress points on your screen, just uh, pointing out that very same thing. St. George, Carney, Reddy on three, Quinn, Brennan, Jeffries on two, Jansen, Stone and Grant on one, and for Eastern Suburbs, Hastings, the leader, on four points, Harrison Beatson on three, Fairfax two, and O'Reilly one. In the event of a tie, the player who scores the most points tonight will automatically become the winner on a countback. OK, let's go to Frank Hyde and Keith Barnes now with their quarter time review. And my first question of you, Frank Hyde, is two tries, two brilliant tries by Eastern Suburbs. Can St George get their act together? It's a pretty clumsy one after 20 minutes. Yes, they've made too many mistakes, uh, handling mistakes, and uh, not moving up on the Eastern Suburbs <laughs> players in possession. I feel that Eastern Suburbs have that uh, advantage of experience because this is really cup-tie football, and there could be a change in the next three quarters, I realise that, but so far, uh, Eastern Suburbs has shown just what experience they have. Now, O'Reilly is taking the ball up, firstly. Uh, that's his role, evidently. They're reversing play back in field with Harris coming in. They're using all the experienced players with Fulton, the, the, the hub of everything. And uh, unless they run out of steam, well, I must concede that uh, Keith has, uh, has picked a winner in this one with, uh, with East uh, winning it. Keith, Stephen Butler earlier in the year was a very safe fullback under pressure from bombs, but later in the year we've noticed him often come off on the wrong side of them. Yes, and uh, he's a little bit shaky out there this evening too, and full marks to Russell Fairfax because he's picked that. Uh, he's noticed that um, he went up to take the ball out of Butler's arms to score that second try, and then uh, shortly afterwards when Grant uh, kicked the goal and Fulton kicked off, again it was Butler that made an elementary mistake, and you notice that as soon as uh, Eastern Suburbs had possession, Fulton, um, Fairfax put the ball high up in here again, straight at Bal Butler, and didn't give him any chance to settle down. That's yeah. good tactics. But the dominant figure out there at the moment, of course, is Fulton. He's calling the tune and pulling the strings and playing particularly well. And uh, Eastern Suburbs appreciating possession. And that's the difference between the two teams at the moment. That quarter time wrap up from Frank Hyde and Keith Barnes in just a few moments. Back to all the action of the 1978 Amco Cup final with Eastern Suburbs 10, St. George 2. So we're back now for the second quarter of the Amco Cup. And Mitch Brennan is off the field at the moment and if that uh, is a permanent situation then St George have uh, really suffered a body blow they're in possession well, and down 10-2 well, I'd say he's got a shoulder injury or an arm injury it looks as if he's got a needle from the uh, St George Club doctor there but he's coming back onto the field yes well I uh, didn't hasten into uh, the comment on uh, Mitch Brennan because I couldn't see a replacement and it did appear that Brennan was about to go back on and then he went back and was wrapped up in a blanket while they did some further treatment on him. So it's St George now with their backs to the wall again, a very familiar sight after 21 minutes of football and that kick was by Craig Young, it's with Schubert. Fairfax will go with him. Schubert, a dummy and then a change of pace taking him about three metres into St George's territory. Fairfax, Hastings, Mackay. Hastings, Fulton, the run round with Hastings, and now Mark Harris, tackled by Trudgett. Only just though, he was nearly on his way, wasn't he? Mm. Out to a rally, Mackay, front rower to second rower, and the outside of that pair was Mossman, would you believe? So, a very unlikely sight standing out in the actual 5-8 inside and outside centre position. Fulton giving it to O'Reilly, and back to Schubert. That's the end of the tackle count and the scrum is to go down just outside the 22 on St George's end of the field in front of the scoreboard. Put in by Carney. Battle for possession. Every Danzy wants it again. 
Robinson, Eastern Suburbs ball, Fulton and Hastings working. Hastings lofting one over the top to Fairfax. Oh, lovely. Got his lovely Fairfax mm -hmm. On the outside power, now Mullins. Mullins back towards the 22 and Grust about 22 metres out. Out to Aleph. Aleph looking for O'Reilly coming on the burst, but O'Reilly is going into dummy half now. Fulton calling for it on the right. There he is with the ball. Now to Mark Harris. On to the 22. Wrestled to the ground by Reddy. Power, number four for Eastern Suburbs. Stevens opting to go himself. Here's O'Reilly. And this big man has created problems for St George. And here is Michael Mossman now. One-handed pass to Hastings. Turning it around to Mackay. Mackay over the 22. Mountier goes ahead a further couple of metres. Last tackle coming up for the Roosters. Leading by 10 to 2. Fulton. There it goes again. Another test for Butler. Butler's above them and I think he's lost it again. He has. Yes, he has. George Grant with it. It's a penalty. It's offside. I noticed Fairfax flattened his back too as he followed the kick through. <laughs> but uh, of course you can't entirely blame the fullback in a situation like that, but um, he's 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 a sitting duck, isn't he? Everyone's well, charging he, through and he hasn't got much not, opportunity. Not only the, the opposition coming down on him, Keith, but his own players in front of him are, are in his road going up for the ball. And he, he must keep his eye on the ball so he can't see where they all are. And in a, in a situation like that, of course, the uh, a lot of the Eastern Suburbs players uh, are going up there just with the to harass him. That's right. Yes. Of course, they make him the pretext of going for the ball, yeah. but in effect, they're making sure that uh, that uh, Butler doesn't get to it and the ball goes loose, isn't it? Loose, and then, of course, it's 50 50 who gets it. But they're beautifully placed kicks. The three that oh, they've yes, had they so are. far are beautifully placed. Stevens now with a very simple penalty shot. Very versatile player is Kevin Stevens. Moving up, strikes it, no troubles. And Eastern Suburbs lead 12 points to two through the courtesy of the boot of Kevin Stevens, who created such problems for Balmain at the weekend. And ironically, Kevin Stevens is the man that uh, the reports have it. Balmain have been trying to purchase for next year. Well, that's three out of three for Kevin Stevens. Uh, he doesn't have the goal kicking range of uh, George Green, but from 35 yards out, he's tremendously accurate and piles up a lot of points. Ready taking the kick off. Hubert sending a divot of uh, turf skyward as he went for traction inside the 22. Harris. Ooh, Jeffrey's coming down hard over the top of Harris. Brought a, a sigh from the crowd. Hastings. And he was thumped to the ground by Jansen. He was left on his own then. He was looking <laughs> for a forward and uh, there was no one to be found. One of the few occasions, of course. O'Reilly. Hastings, getting that left boot to it, Brennan going back for it, now let's see if Brennan's still got his speed after that injury he suffered, yes there's plenty of speed there, he threw Schubert, and that brought back memories of that try, as he lost his footing, on to Young, out to trudge it, and there's another St George error. Eastern Suburbs, go back onto the attack through Fulton, now Mark Harris, looking to unload but uh, to my way of thinking a couple of seconds too late on to O'Reilly cuts out Mountier Hubert couldn't see it because of players between him and the ball carrier see East can make mistakes like that and recover same thing with St George uh, but they're not there to take advantage of it no but the big point about Eastern Summers is that their defence are moving up quickly and they're That's pressuring right. St George all That's the time right. and they're forcing them into those areas so that's against the ball player, in fact, interfering with the marker. And it's a very interesting one, especially for the youngsters watching this telecast tonight, and I'm sure a lot of them have received dispensations from their parents to sit up and watch the AMCO telecast. But it's a rule that is not applied as much as I think it should be. And watching a lot of uh, junior football these days, it's something that's creeping into their game, and it certainly is refreshing to see Jack Danzy clamping down on us and giving such a, a clear indication of what the penalty is over. 
So George Grant now to take a penalty kick for goal. At half time tonight, we'll be screening the five runners up in the Golden Try competition. And those tries will include the players nominated as the maker of that try. And each of them will win a holiday with Clippers Anchorage from Cole and Candle Creek. We'll then announce the actual Golden Try and nominee for the 1978 um, Golden Try Award, together with the name of the viewer who has also won the Clippers holiday in the viewers' competition. George Grant. Moving up, looking for 12-4. It's got the length, it's got the height, but it's wide. There's a little bit of a drift of that uh, bottom right-hand corner when Grant hit the ball OK, and uh, there was a little bit of a drift there, and it took it just outside that uh, right-hand upright. Plenty of distance, though. Uh, but a let-off as far as East are concerned, and points that uh, St George desperately needs. Carrie's a very famous rugby league name, but no relation. Budget. From Oberon in New South Wales. Now the young. Ready. He's lost it. Hastings with the ball, but referee Damsey has called a halt. And he's going to put down a scrum for the double knock-off. Seven times so far, St. George have forfeited possession. A loser. Yes, I think St George probably making a mistake. They're attempting to play the game across the field rather than so. go straight up the middle. And uh, they, I think they're playing into Eastern Summers' hands at the moment because Fulton and Harris are masters at that moving up. Oh, Rudyard has split them wide open. But notice how quickly they recover. That's right. They're back into position and the line is there. Graham Quinn from Dummy Half. Gaining a further 10 metres and Reddy is very anxious for the ball. That's him with it now. Young's on his outside. Ailiff across the top with a dubious one. Young calling for it on the right. That's him. The try by St George at this stage will really bring it to light, will oh, yes. 11 minutes out from half time. Fudget. Last tackle coming up now. Young turns it back to Robert Finch. Back to Grant. And away the pass, too yeah. hard to trudge it. Well, I still think that's the area that they should be attacking. That's right, them. that's right, because each have got that straight line of the fence right across the field, and once it's broken, if there's support for the ball carrier, there's a try on. Fed by Hastings, won by Eastern Suburbs. Hastings away very, very quickly. It must have been a very clean ball, won by Arthur Maldia. Fulton, Stevens, Harris, back to Stevens. Put the ground by Finch. Mossman. Taken by Finch. One of the few occasions That's that they've the capitalised on, isn't it? Yes. Ready. Young. Budget. Jeffries. John Jansen. Budget again. Budget. Getting it back. It's with Jansen again. Jansen, neat little swerve around. Eight metres from the 22. Craig Young. Now ready. Brennan has come from the right wing. It's gone to Carney. Carney to the 22. Mitch Brennan is there, as you can see, a dummy half on the left of the field. He's come from the right. And the penalty goes to St. George against Fulton. I don't know what Bobby Fulton was really complaining about. He's a past master of laying right. all over the person that he tackles and keeps them down as long as uh, possible. And, of course, this is uh, very good tactics. It allows the uh, uh, defence to get back into position as well. That was probably the first occasion, though, that St George had really put their game together, and they did look dangerous. They certainly did. And, and uh, probably, you know, I have a suspicion that uh, Fulton may have engineered this just to uh, make sure that that, uh, that attacking rhythm was broken down temporarily. Fulton, of course, you mightn't read about that part of his play in his Rugby League book, but you'll certainly read a lot more about Rugby League in a magnificent publication by Bobby Fulton. On sale now. George Grant taking a penalty kick for St. George. Strikes it, it's high enough, but it's just wide, Frank Hyde. <laughs> I thought it had to go in, didn't you? Yes, like it was just outside there all the time and looking for the little drift. And, and the wind was uh, on this side of him too. It didn't come from him. It was a very well-placed kick and uh, I'd say he would have been very happy with it when it left his boot. Arthur Mountie are playing it. 
Hastings giving it to Fulton. Now to O'Reilly. Taken to ground by Grant. Fulton. Looking to get the kick in, I feel sure, but he was blotted out of the game very quickly. And now St. George's form over Fulton. You don't see them play their game in this area very often, Eastern Suburbs. Fairfax, he's another one of the players that might get the kick in. And mm. I doubt that he should have kicked it after all that. He's given the penalty away for shepherding. shepherding. So Grant will be called on maybe to take another kick for goal. But Reddy seems like he might be just as keen to take the tap. That's what he's about. Well, where are the rest of these forward to be going? He's going to put it over the line. Oh. Well, he's looking to come back to give himself an extra, <laughs> extra couple of yards. So he also Grant. gives it to Eastern Suburbs, too. Okay. Yes, of course. Well, Eastern Suburbs might have been sent a telegram, but uh, Grant now is accepted by East and put to ground. That was bad captaincy by uh, Reddy in my book. Let's see what happens this time. Looking to break that Eastern Suburbs defence. So he was over the line at one stage then. Robert Stone it was. St George now. They go to the right and here's Reddy. Reddy trying to get the pass away. In the far corner, ready to play it. Playing it back to John Jansen. Towed through by Eastern Suburbs. Scooped back into the field of play by Jansen. Good play by him. Grant has it though. Grant to play it. Can't Tackle start count. Again, yes, it started again, Frank, as they go on to the attack again. St. George. Young out to trudge it. Dummies once, then back to Butler. That's good, uh, Eastern Suburbs defence, Keith. Jeffries to Young. And oh! the big man! The big man looking to, uh, to unload and too hard to Jansen. Well, they don't get too many opportunities better than that one, and uh, Craig Young certainly pierced the Eastern Suburbs defence, which is no mean feat. And uh, he had plenty of time to hold up his pass, didn't he? Yep. Looked for Jensen and threw it just a fraction high with Jensen steaming onto it. Mountier is down injured for Eastern Suburbs as Mullins comes crashing away with the ball. I don't think East will play it down here for too long. Stevens. O'Reilly. Mossman. Last tackle coming up for Eastern Suburbs. They're looking for Bobby Fulton. That's him. Swings around Finch and gets the kick in down into centre field. And Butler, of course, is over on the touch line. He's got to make his long run across field. And he's got uh, Michael Saradini with him, and you wouldn't believe it. They got a quick there, Eastern Suburbs. Oh, yeah. Well-placed kick by Fulton, That's too. Right. He, uh, picked Butler out of position, or picked where he was, and uh, kicked to the open space. Butler was looking for the grabber kick that he's uh, used several times. Is that breeze drifting around a little bit? Yes, it seems to be coming straight from the west now. Craig Young to the halfway. Five minutes out from half time. Jeffries, ready. Looks on the inside, oh, but nobody man. wants it. And it's gone forward, so the scrum to go down just on St. George's side of halfway. Well, as last week, Reddy was picking up the runners with those passes. Uh, he's not finding them this evening. And Eastern Suburbs, of course, paying him plenty of attention and not giving him any latitude whatsoever. County to feed. There's not much in the game, though. Even though Eastern Suburbs 12 points to two, you'd say they'd have a handy lead. But uh... out to Finch. Robert Finch around one, taken though by Stevens and driven into the ground. Ready to Stone, then to Saradini. Graham Quinn. Stevens again, a good tackle. Craig Young, back to Trudgett. Trudgett playing it back to Jansen. Second row for St. George makes about eight metres before going to ground, midway between the 22 and the halfway. Last tackle coming up for the Saints to Craig Young. Back it goes to Graham Quinn. On it goes to Jansen. He can't handle it. It's been picked up by a player in an offside position. You notice, Keith, when the St. George forwards make a run, they have to pass the ball at least five metres back. There is nobody running on with them. N not like with Eastern Suburbs. No, East are picking each East other up a lot picking closer. Each other up. It's 
card uh, <coughs> banked away on the far side of the field, making a, a colourful sight as they swell right back to the top of the embankments at Leichhardt, adjacent to the scoreboard, and sitting on top of every vantage point they can find. So Stevens to take the tap, Aleph, and then the reverse move by Eastern Suburbs. Came unstuck, didn't it? Um, it certainly did. I'd say Bobby Fulton laying down the law, then he wouldn't be too happy about that one. Mm. And that is how fat they stay in the Eastern Suburbs with Fulton and Harris. Yes, well, they're, they're winning an equal share of the scrum. But But they're being pressured into that particular situation, right, I think, yes. with the tactics that Eastern Suburbs yep. are, uh, are applying. And it's surprising that uh, that Reddy hasn't worked up to that particular yeah. fact. But look at the ease with which Eastern Suburbs can pass it, even though they don't uh, gain any ground. They're passing it from one to the other, and there's nobody knocking them down. This is John McCann. Just on the St. George side of halfway. Out to Fulton. Hastings. Hastings electing to go himself for Stevens. It was uh, virtually too close for him. Mountia. From dummy half goes Mountia. Now the Eastern Suburbs back line is fanned out wide and deep. Stevens. O'Reilly. Back to Fulton. There goes the kick. Down to Stephen Butler. Bouncing almost at the base of the upright. Set gone. Into the in-goal area, and Butler gets his pass away to Mitch Brennan. Seven metres yeah, out is Brennan. Saradini. Saradini right across the field. Mullins and Fulton making the tackle. I thought there was danger there for a minute. It looked as if there was a bit of a gap, but basically it closed quickly, didn't it? Jansen playing it just inside the 22. Craig Young. Back to Trudgett, out to Robert Finch. Now the last tackle for St. George. Back to Grant, gets the kick in, down to Fairfax. And he's taking Schubert with him. Brennan makes the tackle. Schubert. Mountia. There's the halftime siren sounding and referee Danzi has called a halt. And so in the 1978 Amco Cup Final at halftime, Eastern Suburbs 12, St. George 2. Half-time in the Amco Cup final, 12 points to 2 in favour of Eastern Suburbs over St. George. Now we're about to show you the six tries that survived the cut-off at the judging last Friday by the press writers of Sydney and Brisbane. And we're going to run the tries from the try voted number 6 up to try number 1. And each try will include the player nominated on your screen as having made that try. In other words, the player most responsible for the try. The winner will win this complete leisure package from Volvo, including the Volvo 245 SL Fun Wagon, the Haynes Hunter Runabout, the 75 horsepower Volvo Penta engine, and the Tinker Trailer. A total leisure package and the richest individual prize in rugby league today. Let's now look at the five runners-up in the voting order from number six down to number two. This was a superb pass by Robert Jay after his captain, Jeff Gerard, took it to this point on the field. Watch Jay's pass from almost ground level in this tackle. He was only a matter of six inches from the ground when he got it to Colk, then to Holton, then to Hay, had Stephen White unmarked outside him but didn't need him. They certainly must be impressing Ernie Hamilton and uh, his men. Here's Reddy, beating one, beating two, inside the 22 and he's flying. Reddy scores his second try. Here it is on the... Amco replay, Wood with the run round with Hayward, and then Pillen came in at exactly the right moment, and Hetherington beat that last tackle. Watch it on the Amco Cup replay. 
as Stone pops this ball into the arms of Brennan. And then he crosses the halfway, and those legs working like pistons and covering plenty of ground. Came to Floyd, got it away perfectly into the juggling hands of Buckley, who then turned it on the inside as Commode was there to tackle, and then in to score the try goes Trudge. And this is the last tackle coming up for the uh, Sydney side. It's gone from Martin, on to Planton, out to Gray. He popped it up quickly to Alan Thompson. Oh, that was a great try. Oh, that could mm, be a great try. try. And now let's have a look at the try judged as being the best in the Amco Cup for 1978. The replay, taken up by Jansen, given to Brennan. He beats one, escapes Heddles, beats Holton, comes to Levy, is felled. Now watch the Parramatta player coming in pursuit here. Mick Price falls over Stephen Butler. And Brennan's in to score. Well, it was really a great try scored by Mitch Brennan, and obviously it won the most votes from the press writers of Sydney and Brisbane because mainly, I would imagine, of its individual brilliance. It certainly was a great try. Let's go down now to the stage area for the draw of the viewers' competition. And with John Brennan, we have Mr. Ross Marshall, the managing director of Clippers Anchorage, to draw the winning envelope. And, of course, Clippers Anchorage provide the prize, the viewers' first prize, and the additional five prizes to those tries that you saw numbered six down to two. Let's take you down now to John Brennan. Good Ray. Ray Warren, for the benefit of our audience down here at the Leichhardt Oval, has rolled the six Volvo Pento Golden Tries. Uh, it has been adjudicated. The winning try will be advised at the conclusion of our 1978 Amco Cup. But we're down here on stage for the viewers' win. And we have all of the correct entries of the Golden Try placed in this particular barrel and in just a moment we'll get Ross Marshall the executive director of uh, Clipper Anchorage to make the drawing because Clipper Anchorage have put up a magnificent cruise for X amount of days on that magnificent Hawkesbury a great way to relax first of all Ross we'll just give it a couple of woozies like that we'll open up the old lock then we're up and I'll ask you to uh, dip on in there and see what good we can do for someone. Remember, this is the Clipper Anchorage Prize for a viewer. They could be, of course, here at Leichhardt Oval. And uh, the prize, a Clipper Anchorage cruise for magnificent days on the Hawkesbury. All right, uh, Ross Marshall, Executive Director of Clipper Anchorage. Thank you very much. The winner is try number six, R. Smith of two stroke 94, Windmill Street, Terry Tara Tara Morrison? No. Tara Gindi. T A R R I G I N D I. Thank you. Right, fine. Thank you very much, uh, Ross Marshall. That's the viewers award. And now back to Ray Warren. Thank you, John Brennan and Mr. Ross Marshall. Let's see now what the lucky viewer has won from Clippers Anchorage. A superb luxury holiday for 10 days as master of his own cruiser his or her cruiser with accommodation for up to eight people a magnificent prize supplied by clippers anchorage of coal and candle creek the people who can provide a totally unique holiday of incredible scenery and relaxation just 40 minutes from the heart of sydney that's the viewers prize in the golden try competition from clippers anchorage well frank and keith they're the winners in the golden try who do you now see as the winner of the cup final it's going to be hard to take it away from Eastern Suburbs at this stage, uh, holding a very handy 10 points advantage, and particularly the way they're playing. They value possession, I think, much more than uh, St George at, uh, for the first 40 minutes of the half, and they played good percentage football, good cup tie football, uh, based on defence, and this is the game that they've been playing all through the season, of course. Their tactical kicking is particularly good with Fulton, the ringmaster, and uh, a lot of pressure on St George. Now, they have to score, and they have to score early in this second half if they're going to get back into the game, and, of course, they're being forced into errors. Frank, have you had a chance to change a tip, would you? Well, uh, yes, I would at this stage, because I didn't think that Eastern Suburbs could sustain the effort that they've put in in this, these two uh, quarters. Uh, they've pressured, as Keith has said, they've pressured St George to such an extent that they're forcing them into errors. Now, I think on about seven occasions in those first two quarters, St George lost the ball to Eastern Suburbs. You can't do that sort of thing because the, the, the scrums are 5-4 in favour of St George at this stage. But when you consider the possession that Eastern Suburbs have had, uh, and they've been able to use it and do something with it too, incidentally, uh, 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 St George appear to be frustrated now. And you can see the sort of things that Reddy is doing 
is not the, it's not the ready of last week because he's being pressured. He, a couple of balls he threw on the ground there, which is not the, the sort of uh, football you expect from him. And uh, he's, he's had to come in close. Uh, he's, he's been um, getting rid of the ball uh, earlier than I would like him to. I'd like him to stand back and move away from the ruck because the more he makes these eastern suburbs forwards run, uh, the easier it's going to be for them. But of course, he's got to stop them from coming up quickly. Well, one of the big problems, of course, and it's making it difficult for Eddie, is the fact that uh, the likes of Fulton and Harris are moving up very quickly and driving them back into the eastern suburbs defence that's, that's right. moving up quick on the inside isn't it interesting uh, placard in the eastern suburbs dressing room which i didn't have a chance to remark on earlier uh, huge placard uh, let the roosters put the rocket into orbit uh, they haven't really put him into orbit, but I think they're trying to put him underneath the ground. Yes. Well, he hasn't blasted yes. off yet, has he? It's been legitimate tackling. Don't take me the wrong oh, way. Yes. Yes. Okay, fellows, thanks very much. Frank Hyde and Keith Barnes with the commentary tonight on the Amco Cup final. Let's quickly take the cameras down now to the Avis sign for the first of tonight's two cruise prizes in the Avis CTC competition. Now, the winning number is 36092. 360. 92 is tonight's first winning number and we'll have a name uh, for you going with that number shortly on in the telecast okay we'll take this break and then come back for the second half with eastern suburbs leading st george 12 points to two and so we come back to leichhardt for the second half of the amco cup final and there's the helicopter view on the 010 coverage of the amco cup giving you at home some idea of Amco Cup final atmosphere. 12 2 is the score in favour of Eastern Suburbs as we cut back to the ground cameras. And St George from left to right. No changes. Keep an eye on Red Reddy in these opening minutes, Frank. I just had an idea that he was lifting when he was trotting back onto the field. Oh. Reddy kicks it down to Schubert. He is with uh, Eastern Suburbs in the second half, although as Keith Barnes remarked, it does appear as though it might have swung around a fraction and could even be blowing straight across the field. Right. Frank Hyde made the comment earlier on that four-quarter football certainly should suit players like O'Reilly, and if he keeps going like he did in the first half, he's going to be right up there in the man of the match voting. Mossman. tackle coming up for Eastern Suburbs back to Hastings gets the kick onto the left boot and down to Stephen Butler coming outside the 22 and taken by Hastings and Maltier Carney as Keith Barnes said St George have got to make the bust and make it very very early on in the second half ready suburbs have a player down injured at the moment it's Kevin Hastings Craig Young back to Jansen Young again Trudget chipping over the top Trudget's coming between the eastern suburbs players Stevens dives on it a little bit unfortunate he could have caught the penalty yeah. there St George Keith St George is still waiting for Eastern Suburbs to come to them instead of moving up and knocking them down as East are doing to them. That's the big difference in the two sides as far as the defensive pattern is concerned. Stevens, Hastings, Fulton, O'Reilly. O'Reilly getting it back to Mountier. Hastings and Hastings goes into the, into the gap with Aleph. Power now. Schubert. Fulton testing Butler again crowd loving every moment of this seeing a superb performance by Bobby Fulton as the penalty goes to St. George Absolutely superb effort by this man. Now, I, I, 
have a suspicion, uh, Ray, that uh, the fact of him playing 5-8 was something known to Eastern Suburbs all the week. Yes, well, uh, he played against Balmain out here on Sunday and uh, his name appeared in the program as a centre, but I can assure yes. you that he played in uh, any other position but that. He was directing operations exactly the same way as he is out there this evening. And the point I make is that <laughs> Harry Bart has probably uh, devised his tactics uh, of picking uh, Fulton as uh, centre. Bart Harris playing it on the 22. Fulton switching it to O'Reilly. Mackay. No change in score. Four minutes of the third quarter gone. 12 2. O'Reilly. Bad pass by O'Reilly. Oh, yeah. He was lucky to get away with it, I think. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the St. George player knocked it back to him. No, no. St. George in position. Sorodini plays it. And uh, Graham Quinn goes away with it to the touchline on the far side and then driven back in the tackle over the top by Bill Mullins. Young. Back to Jansen. Great Young picking it up uh, nicely. It was a bad pass. Carney. Stone. Sorodini almost away. <coughs> Ready. Eastern Suburbs really sweating on Ready. Carney. Badly placed it. Keith Schubert's had a pretty long run for it. Brennan chasing Schubert, but now Fairfax coming back at the different angle. And the ball kicker, Carney, makes the tackle. Hastings, Ailiff, out to power, taken by Robert Finch. Royce Ailiff. Graham Quinn going into the swinging arm, and the referee Danzy hasn't missed him either. Couldn't really miss him in a situation like that. That's Probably pretty knows. pointless, wasn't it, as far as uh, Quinn was concerned? Well, it was a real attention getter. <laughs> Attracting mainly the attention of referee Jack Danzy and uh, giving the penalty to Eastern Suburbs. And it certainly, I feel, indicates some of the frustration in this St. George side. Brought upon by the excellent defence of Eastern Suburbs. I think it's the main reason for the frustration we've seen through this St. George effort tonight. Schubert. Arthur Maltier, one of the unsung heroes of the Eastern Suburbs victories in the Cup through 78. Hastings. Kevin Hastings is not too well. Well, now, that could have easily been a penalty to St. George. It's with Aleph. Fairfax. Mackay. Put down by Trudgett. O'Reilly. Hastings has it. Humphrey Danzy rolling a knock on and uh, it's going to be a scrum on the 22. Yes, O'Reilly looking to get his pass away there. Hastings uh, lurking in the background all the time, isn't he? Looking for that pass. Just had he been able to flick it, it would have been a good pass too, but he just dropped it down in front of him. He's looking to get rid of it all the time, though, Riley, isn't he? Scrum one by the Eastern Suburb side. Yes, the referee there was a Dancy boot went there, too. Has uh, pulled <laughs> out Grant and Reddy. He's certainly in the wars tonight, Hastings, isn't he? He's uh, caught the shoulder a couple of minutes ago, and now uh, then ahead. And now, of course, he's popped this one in the ankle. But uh, he's given the Eastern Suburbs tremendous service. He's had some wonderful games in the right. uh, lead-up to this uh, AMCO Cup final. All the players, administrators and commentators of Rugby League are getting ready for the great Rugby League golf day for charity. That's the 78 Henry Winterman's Rugby League Pro-Am. Proceeds to Legacy. If you're not playing in the event, we do hope that you'll be able to come out and see all the Rugby League superstars at golf at the New South Wales Golf Course on Monday, the 28th of July. That's Monday, uh, August, I should say. That's Monday week. And we can assure you of a real fun day seeing the stars in action in another sport. So the penalty going to Eastern Suburbs and Stevens should have little trouble with this one. He's very, very accurate from around uh, this kicking area. 12-2 and 14-2 is going to take them outside the range of two converted tries. 
stage. Uh, yeah, they're not giving any real indication at the moment, St George, that they can get back into the game, are they? I can't see it. Keith, they're persisting uh, in their tactics uh, that they employed in that first half. Stevens likes it. It's there. 14 points to two is the score. Four, four uh, goals from four attempts from uh, Stevens. Of course, they've all been in very kickable positions, haven't they, as far as Kevin Stevens is concerned, and we know what an accurate kicker he is. But he's been responsible for eight uh, very important points, is not he? Ready. Starting play again. Sending it down between Stevens, Fairfax and Schubert. And the latter comes away with it. Fulton, Mullins, Rally, back to Stevens, with Mackay, Hastings, Saladini was looking for that one to bounce up and hit him in the chest and he would have been well and truly in the score. Referee Nancy not too popular with that one, but uh, he was right on the spot, and uh, Soradini came in on the fly for that one. If he'd have been lucky enough to be favoured by a good bounce, it uh, would have been five points. Stephen Edge is on in place of Jeffries, too, at this stage. Hastings officiating at scrum base for Eastern Suburbs. St. George's ball. Budget. Bench. Carney. That, that uh, Eastern Suburbs defence, Keith, they've won the ball, St George, and lost 10 metres. That's right. Stephen Edge, the 77 skipper. Graham Quinn. Ready. Young. Trudget. Strong little fellow. Gets a lot of work for St George. That's Stephen Edge in 16. And this is their last tackle. They're back to where the previous scrum formed. Quinn. Now they're going to pressure Fairfax. Saladimi's coming very quickly. Oh, Grant almost had that ball. The referee Danzi's going to put a scrum down for the dual knock-on. Well, Fairfax was in a similar situation to what Butler found himself. And, uh, of course, uh, he had no opportunity of getting to the ball then. Very important scrum, this one. Penalty to the Saints. Incorrect feed, is it, against Hastings, yes. Indicating that he wants the ball fed in a downward motion. And it's a presentation for St George, but they've decided that it's too late for the two points. Yes, I was wondering what Reddy would do. I think I'd be inclined to take the two points all the same, but it's good tactics as far as Eastern Suburbs is concerned because there's not much chance of Grant kicking seven goals to... Uh, uh, to kick them to the lead, right. and uh, admittedly they get them, that's George right, Admitt admittedly again. he's picking up an easy two points, but two's better than five, and uh, they've got a big leeway to make up, and um, I don't think Bobby Fulton would be too concerned about giving away that two points in a situation like that. Much more the time wasted in the, uh, the kicking of the goal is valuable time, particularly for Eastern Suburbs. As yeah. the most famous rugby league commentator of all time, what about calling this goal for me? <laughs> well, he has it placed right in front. And he should be able to throw it over from there. There it is. Well, it's long, it's high, and it's a beauty straight between the posts. 14 points to four, the scoreline. Eastern Suburbs with eight minutes of the third quarter remaining. I doubt that there would be any more... What will I say? Well-known phrasing in rugby league than uh, what we just heard on the Amco Cup for the first time. Sometimes it introduces a little more culture than that, though. <laughs> <laughs> so Bozo Fulton has it placed for another restart. And it's going down to Carney. Going 
Got his pass away delicately, but very, very professionally there to Finch, who turned it back inside the butler. And now Stowe. I don't think we've seen as much of Stone and Jensen as maybe we would, would have liked. Young. This man's done his job. Twenty-seven minutes of cup football remaining for 78. Stone. But everywhere they go, the Dragons are swarmed over by upwards of two roosters. As Reddy gets his kick in and finding touch just on the eastern suburb side of halfway. Although right. I did think there was more thrust and drive in there since George plays that brought the ball up. Yes, but there, there, there wasn't any support for them each time. There were three play the balls there, Keith, where the, the, the forwards ran through with not a, another forward within two or three metres to take the pass if they broke the line. Dancy calling, calling the scrum down again. And St George winner, it's out with Crudget. Gordon swarming over the opposite number six. Yes, but Ed's starting to give them a bit of possession, isn't he now? Grant. Tackled by Hastings. Craig Young. Robert Finch. And that's Graham Quinn. Craig Young again. Edge. Well, to take that pass, I don't think that he knew it was coming, and it was a little bit hard anyway. Carney, ready. Almost completely blotted from the game, Rod Reddy. He hasn't made a break yet, has he? He's been uh, put on the deck every time as soon as he's had the ball. Mullins has it for Eastern Suburbs, following a very, very ordinary attempt at finding touch. Roy Saylor. Tackled by another member of that 74 schoolboy side, Craig Young. O'Reilly. Hastings with the tackle count resuming and Hastings looking to split St. George. Stevens. Back to Mountier. Fulton. Aleph Fulton. Now with Mackay. That was the difference there between Fulton and a lot of other players. Uh, the pass wasn't on to Harris coming through on the burst, and uh, rather than risk the pass going astray, Fulton hung on to it. Towed back by Hastings, and uh, I thought he was offside. I thought he was offside. <laughs> In fact, uh, I think he almost certainly was, but uh, it's gone into touch, that grub kick, and it's a magnificent kick, uh, finding about 45 metres with the minimum of effort. And George will need to win this one. He just won the, the two scrums that he's been uh, backed in so far since he came out of the field. And Stephen Edge has uh, won it again. Carney. Driven by Hastings. They've had a good duel, those two, haven't they? Mm. Hastings just a little in front, I'd say, Keith. Soradini. Looking in vain, as so many of his colleagues have done tonight, to find any semblance of a gap through the eastern suburb side. Hasn't been there, and the way they're playing, it doesn't look like presenting itself. Ready? That might be the way to break them, says Ready, as it goes back to Hastings. Uh, possession with the eastern suburb side leading 14 points to four two converted tries in the lead with 23 minutes of time remaining Fulton Mossman eastern suburb from the cup in 1975 they went on to win the premiership in the same year proving that it can be done and this is O'Reilly of all the sides that have contested five years of cup football, the side in possession of the ball now have been by far the most successful. Mackay. There it goes again. Disappearing through the lights. Knocked back down, and it was Stevens. 
Eastern Suburbs onto the attack, but it's St George getting off the hook, and away goes Fence. The beautifully placed kicks of Fulton's, aren't they? If they go just where he wants them to go. Inside the five against Eastern Suburbs. There hasn't been anything in this game, of course, when you take that first uh, 15 minutes out of it, when St George, when um, East hit the way to that 10 points to nil lead. So we're looking at the remainder of the game. It's uh, four points each, isn't it? Right. Without a try being scored. Um, it's taken St George a long while to recover from that initial setback. Stone, Young, Cunny. Young, Trudget, Jensen, Quinn. Good football by St George there. Craig Young calling for it quickly. That's him with it. Out to Carney. Out to Reddy. Did well to get a pass to Butler. Ducks under O'Reilly, but then runs into Mullins and also Mossman. I'll tell you what, they hit him hard too. Butler gingerly getting to his feet ready young popping it up to Jansen there's not a man in that eastern suburb shirking his dude in defense though is I've he? I've never seen better defense than eastern suburb going up here tonight ready has put them all on side but Schubert up in a la Barassi fashion Schubert's hurt too I think in that uh taking of that uh, kick that's a ready. clever kick by Fulton and I think it's going to find touch is it yes it took a right hand turn knowing that he had the entire St George side up after that bomb which was taken so well by Schubert and knowing that Butler is on the ground injured on the far side of the field Fulton has put that down just outside the 22 line and there's the scrum forming and it was a dangerous situation too because Fairfax summed that's it up right. and he was on the burst right. he was had flying down there he would have been in a lot of trouble up My there word. It's a very groggy Stephen Butler still on the ground receiving attention. Aston George win another scrum and Stephen Edge is getting them plenty of ball to do something with, but that's the big thing that uh, has evaded them tonight. Unable to breach this defence. Rocklight from Eastern Suburbs. Young. Back to Soradini. Three-quarter time siren sounding. Damsey indicates that he's heard it. And at three-quarter time, with 20 minutes of the Amco Cup football final coming your way, it's 14-4, Eastern Suburbs in the lead. Just repeating the three-quarter time score, Eastern Suburbs 14, leading St George 4. As I mentioned earlier, the Man of the Match awards from National are crucial tonight for the final Superstar Award. However, even if the player who is the Man of the Match tonight does not win the Superstar Award, the Man of the Match will at least have the chance of collecting for example, this magnificent 43 centimetre colour television receiver from National. It's uh, one, or the one I should say, and that's exactly the right word, it's the one. With the Quintrex tube and one of the great products from National. Just slightly ahead of our times is the National <laughs> Company. Well, Frank and Keith, um, man of the match points are certainly going to be very interesting tonight. But until we reach the stage where that becomes... Uh, more pressing let's press on with how you see this cup final at the moment and 14 4 two converted tries and i haven't seen any comeback at all from st george it's just been as dominant by east as it was in the first half yes but uh, uh, st george will have to do in this last quarter what uh, east did in the first quarter and that's uh, scored two converted tries to get near them uh, as keith had mentioned earlier there's there's not that much between them since that first quarter but i still feel that eastern suburbs have been the better side on the on the run of play they've made the fewer mistakes and of course with those pinpointing kicks of fulton uh, St George are just frustrated. Well, Keith, can I ask you this question? Harry Bath is down there at the moment lecturing the St George side. What would you be saying if you were the coach of St George at the moment? I'd be making sure that I played it down in Eastern Suburbs territory. Uh, Edge is getting possession of the scrums. He's been on there now for some uh, 15 or 20 minutes or so, and uh, he's won the only four scrums. And I thought St George looked a lot more positive in that uh, third quarter than at any other time in the game. 
certainly the eastern suburbs defense has held and held particularly well but at least there's been a few chinks there that uh, that st george have um, uh, breached their defense on a couple of occasions certainly they haven't made a great deal of ground but their only opportunity i feel is to turn and get down in eastern suburbs territory and attack from there and i think they've got to be hitting up the middle of the rucks bringing those long driving kicks down and uh, attempting to get down in here because they're not going to win the game from up in their own territory because the Eastern Suburbs defence is just too good. That's right. It's the, it's the only tactic possible in, in these circumstances because, in, in, number one, Edge is winning the scrum. Well, now, for them to do any good, they must be in Eastern Suburbs side of halfway, so they've got to blast it down there all the time. OK, Frank Hyde and Keith Barnes with their three-quarter time summing up. Now, at uh, half-time, we drew the weekly cruise from Avis and CTC now for the the big one the cruise for two people that is worth over five thousand dollars with ctc lines let's take the cameras down to show you the number uh is five double seven three oh five double seven three oh is the second winning number from avis tonight but that last one we showed you is the big one believe me and congratulations to the winners and we'll have to get their names later on because the avis people would you believe haven't been able to make the commentary box because of the size of the crowd tonight but we'll certainly do our best before the conclusion of the telecast the other thing that i would like to mention to you is a magnificent publication put out by big league the official organ of the new south wales rugby league that's just the centerfold the australian test team uh, or test squad against new zealand this year and as well there are upwards of 40 color pinups autograph pinups of all your stars so you'll be able to buy that at the semi-final starting next weekend in a moment the final quarter no he's a five eight. st george with the 20 minutes of uh, time to come back from down 14 4. Looks like a couple of changes, Ray, or one in particular. Pomfret looks as if he's on, with Soradini going back to fullback, and well, Butler's, uh, Butler's off. off. Yeah. And it's a penalty going to Eastern Suburbs. And indiscretion in the tackle. Fairfax coming up to take the kick for line. So it's uh, Soradini, you say, dropping back to fullback. And uh, Pomfret on the wing has gone onto the wing. So I think both those uh, fellows come from a French background. So this would, uh, well, it's certainly the first time in Amco Cup football that uh, this has happened. It has happened with St George before, though. Mark Harris now taking it down centre field, and it was a very, very desperate tackle that eventually ended that progress from Trunchett. O'Reilly, Stevens, Power, now Schubert beating Brennan and going back in field. And uh, Schubert to play it just outside the 22. Official attendance tonight, 18,050. 18,050 here at Leichhardt to see the 78 Cup final. Mackay. And so again, it's Eastern Suburbs down in this range for the up and under by Fulton. Maldia. Playing it back to Hastings. This is the last, and it'll go to Fulton. There he is. And there goes the up and under. And Carney has it, but for a moment I thought Soradini was going to come straight across the top of the half back and knock him out of the way. Yes, well, they've kept him inside their own goal line, too, so it's a goal line dropper. Of course, he's now retained possession, Frank. Oh, yes. It was very important, that one, wasn't it? Starkey's going on the field, too. After the full-time whistle tonight, we'll have the presentations of the Man of the Match Award, the Superstar Award, and the Golden Try announcement for the players on the field, and most importantly, the presentation to the winning captain of the 78 Cup champion and his speech in reply. More on that in just a moment of what's going to happen after the full-time siren. Here's Mullins, just outside the 22. Back to Royce Aleph. He's had a strong game tonight, Aleph, too. He certainly has. Playing it back to Schubert. On to Hastings. Penalty to East. That's more than likely the ball game. It's against Craig Young. Starkey going on in 17 and replacing Craig Young. Penalty to East. A little bit surprising because I thought Young had had a top game out there this evening. Yes. Looks as if he's carrying an arm though. Could he be carrying an arm or a shoulder? Well, that shot of him indicates that he might be. Just tidying up uh, the um, 
after full-time siren happenings following the awards that I told you about we'll then be announcing the draw for the very exciting $100,000 Challenge Cup starting next week on Channel 10. That competition will run for four weeks and will include eight Sydney Premiership teams made up of the seven clubs missing the semi-final and the eighth team being the club knocked out of the preliminary semi-final. That draw will be announced following the presentations tonight. Stevens has kicked four goals from as many attempts as a four from four, yes. And right in front, he That's makes it five out of five. 16 points to four. Eastern Suburbs looking very much like the 78 Cup champions. And they'll become the first side to win two cups. And of course tonight, $60,000. Quite a good deal more than it was back in 75 when they first took it out. The ball is back to St. George, but Danzi is rolling. The ball went uh, down, forward. Crowd voicing the disapproval on the far side. Only the St. George supporters, I'd say, voicing the disapproval, right? <laughs> this is Lee Pomfret. No excuses really for St George up to this stage because they've well, had a surfeit of possession, haven't they? Certainly, but they can't clear it from the base of the scrum there, Keith. They're, they're, they've been caught time and time again. Either maybe a five eight or the half back particularly, and then the five eight two. Ready. Budget. Back to Stone. Put the ground by Fulton. He's been everywhere tonight, Fulton, in attack and defence. And there's a penalty he's given away. Ready will take the kick for line. Yes, he's got to know there's no point in uh, right. taking the two points. 14 minutes out. Not a good kick by Ready. He's only gained about three metres. The quietest game I've seen from Ready this year. Yes, well, he hasn't had too many opportunities uh, as far as he's concerned. Of course, they've been really sweating on him. Stucky. Bringing it back to the blind side to Reddy. And that's what he's been faced with. Upwards of two, sometimes three. Starkey giving it to Grant. Cunny. Fragit. The dummy and then to Finch. Wheeling his way out of a tackle to Comfort. Stone getting it back to Starkey. Put it back well too. Last tackle for the Saints. Pomfret. Crossfield bomb, but too deep. Well, the idea was certainly right, but it was nowhere near as well directed as those pinpoint bombs of full force. Incidentally, the two winners for the Ava CTC Cruisers tonight are Mrs. Boyle, the first winner with 36092 of Brighton Lee Sands, and the other, the main prize to Jay Sheehan, or Sheehan, of Shallow Rush at Parks. That's the big prize going to Mr. or Mrs. Sheehan. Pulton. Fulton has been well contained, you know, in general play, hasn't he? Apart from that one break that he made, but his uh, directing of play and his tactical kicking, of course, has been the, the feature of the game. And that break was from a dummy half position. A dummy half position, that's right. Stevens, we're well, at now, with Harris around his opposite number. He's got Schubert coming up on the flank. There's Schubert, but wrestled into touch by Brennan. Harris and Schubert having a quick chat. Yes, well, Harris was a victim of circumstances. He did the right thing. He appeared to draw Brennan in, but uh, there was certainly no yardage for Schubert to work in, and Brennan uh, did well to get across as quickly as he did, didn't he? Yeah, but yeah. Harris was picked up on the inside anyhow. There was also cover there coming He was picked up, and that. that gave Brennan that yard to get to Schubert. Penalty going to St. George, feet across against Mountia. 
half and Mount are there shaking his head in disgust. But uh, the hook of his never wrong, is he? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Dan's just had a top game here tonight yes, as a referee. Yes. Stephen Edge up to take the tap. George Grant asked to go Look, forward. Grant there was the only St George player running onto that ball, and that's been typical of them right throughout. Starkey, Jansen, Jansen with a strong run for St George. Yeah, great tackle by Stephen uh, Hastings again. Cunny, ready, Trudget. Oh, gee, win. win. Was almost put through the gap. He's throwing everything into this finish, Frank. That's right, yes, but, but it's, it's typical of them. Right, they're all boast, but not quite. Right throughout the... Uh, yeah, nice. Harris. Fulton down to Sorodimi and Pomplet. Sorodimi with a neat run. Starkey out to Reddy. Back on the inside to Brennan, but that's going to be forward or offside. Yes, it's an intentional forward pass. And I tell you what, he's not wrong, Danzy. Pedoing that ball out into the crowd. Scoring a try earlier in the night. Zali Beaton. Checked out against the winter chills. As Mullins plays it. 18 metres up through Hastings to Fulton and then to O'Reilly. And the big man goes charging ahead to another big man in the shape of Harris. Trudgett was the tackler. Pulled in from dummy half. Just a couple of metres out. O'Reilly might go himself, but Hastings is calling for it. O'Reilly does go himself. Held up by St George. Played back to Mountier. And this was the last tackle coming up for them. Fulton indicates the bomb. O'Reilly back to Fulton. There it goes, into the in-goal area. Soradimi rakes it out in Fairfax fashion. Well, if Eastern Suburbs play this type of football on Sunday against Manly, we could be destined for playoff after playoff to sort out the final five in the premiership and this man will have a very big influence on the match against his old team Fulton Mullins Mackay Grant Hentier is getting ready on the touchline to come on for Eastern Suburbs O'Reilly Hastings Feeling he's going to get that superstar. O'Reilly. Schubert! Schubert! Still going! Is he there? Short! No, he's just short. But what a great break. Out to Mossman. Floating it out to Harris. That could be a great pass. But a good tackle by Grant. He only had to get the ball away to Mullins. Unmarked over there, wasn't he? East now. Fulton. It's there again. Fairfax rakes it down. O'Reilly scooping it away to Schubert. Schubert now towards the corner. He beats one, he beats two, and Schubert scores. The referee Dante has called playback. He's been there for a while. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice smile on his face. Nice up pass by, uh, by uh, O'Reilly. Yes, it was. He's had a good, good strong game this evening, uh, Bob O'Reilly, and uh, figured in a lot of the heavy work. Fairfax offside is the ruling. In my eyes floated along with the ball, and it was going to be a good try by Hubert, and as Frank Hart said, the man responsible was undoubtedly Bob O'Reilly, but Fairfax was ruled offside by referee Dan. Bob O'Reilly has been replaced with uh, Hedger going on. And they'd say he'd uh, get the plaudits of his coach for a job well done. Stone picked up and thrust back. Stucky. Six minutes of the cup final remaining is ready. Moves up and again is greeted by three Eastern Suburbs players. Starkey down to Soradini. Uh, good tackle, Hastings. Jeez, that's a work this kid. Comfort. Cunny. Ready. On his outside is Stone. Comfort. That's going out on the full. Scrum to go down about 10 metres on the St George side of halfway. Number 15 going out for Eastern Suburbs now. Terry Murphy. Terry Murphy not long back from an injury that has really kept him out of the 1978 season. And a very valued player. Replacing power. Penalty to Eastern Suburbs. Incorrect feed by Carney. Piece here at uh, Leichhardt has been stopped at the five minute mark. <laughs> Hastings to take the tap. Hedger coming on the burst. Stevens calling for it. Stevens picked up nicely. Hardy Beatson has opted to send uh, his other two replacements out. They're getting ready on the touchline. And from dummy half goes Mackay. Mackay gets it back to Hedger. And Hedger must be very close. Hastings to dummy half. Shoots it out to Fulton. Pot shot for field goal, or drop goal. And it's Robert Stone coming away. There's a lot of heroes out there in that Eastern Suburb side. Frank, has not there? Not the least of them is Harris, too. He's had a top game. It's uh, Mal Connor and Paul Jeffs are uh, waiting to go on for uh, Eastern Suburbs. And they're itching, too. They can't get on there quickly after being for the kill. Penalty to St. George. Somebody sounding a, a dummy siren in the background. Two replacements on. That's the hold-up. That's Judge just advising referee Danzi. And Arthur Maldia, who's done a magnificent job for his team, not only tonight, but right through the series, has come off with Michael Mossman, as really finds the touch line. And the free kick to be taken by... Um, Edge and given to Grant. Stone. That's what happens when Stone meets Granite, and that's really what this Eastern Suburbs defence has been tonight. A granite like wall. As ready as put the ground, and it's Hastings for Eastern Suburbs, scampering through two tackles. Magnificent game, Kevin Hastings. Grant Hedger. Sixteen points to four. Inside the last five minutes. Fulton. Harris. Fairfax was coming on that ball very quickly, and Terry Murphy was on his outside. Stevens to Fulton. Hastings coming from an onside position. He's got the ball. 
juggling it and taking it to ground. Connor pulls in. Chance for the uh, tricolours here. Stevens back to Mackay. Mackay will play it back to Mal Connor. On in 16 for the red, white and blues. Fairfax wants it. That's him. Cuts out about three to Hastings. On it goes now to Royce Aylof and he's into touch. <laughs> They're finishing strong, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Eastern Suburbs, they've, uh, their defence has withstood everything that St George could throw at them, and now they're really opening up an attack. They uh, hit St George with that early onslaught, rattling up 10 points in the first 15 minutes, with uh, Fulton putting the first one on the board by uh, Kevin Hastings at the ninth minute, and now it's been all uh, Eastern Suburbs in the last 10 minutes of the game. St George winning the scrum and Carney has tackled. Don't forget, after the I Amco like Cup replay tonight, you'll see the final of the Amco Shield between Padua College of Brisbane and the Fairfield Patrician Brothers of Sydney. St George now with the ball. Ten metres out from their own try line and it's uh, ready. We said last week when ready fires St George fires but unfortunately he's been well contained this evening and uh, St George very flat. I must concede to you Keith you uh, tipped uh, Eastern Suburbs and uh, they did just exactly as you said. Their tackling, their defence has been the, the, the feature of this game tonight. Unfortunately, Frank, it wasn't a very confident prediction. Eh? <laughs> St George now with Jansen saying, let's get out of here, but uh, blotted down by Schubert. Referee Danzi taking it over to the 22. As coming from the field is Robert Stone for St George. There's the siren. The cup final is over. Eastern Suburbs have won their second with a 16 points to four victory over the Dragons of St. George. Well, there they are. Eastern Suburbs. The heroes of tonight in their Amco Cup final by 16 points to four. Artie Beetson, the coach, going out to meet his players now. Bobby Fulton, one of the real stars of the game, playing in his first cup for 1978, his first cup match. Artie Beetson in there somewhere. And very, very colourful scenes here at Leichhardt. We'll take a break and come back in just a moment to join down on the dais, John Brennan, for the 78 Amco Cup presentation. Welcome now to the presentation of the 1978 MK Cup, the quarter million dollar competition, and tonight, Easts are champions. And now I'd like to ask the skipper of Eastern Suburbs, Bobby Fulton, to come forward and accept the prestigious MK Cup and the cheque for $60,000, Bobby. Oh, yes, indeed. Bobby Fulton. Oh, the dog. And here he comes. The proud man tonight, Bobby Fulton. Good on you, mate. Tremendous. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd now like to ask Mr. Cliff Vincent, Jr., Managing Director of Amco Holdings, to present to Bob and his teammates the cup and the check. Mr. Vincent. Mr. Vincent. There he is. Thanks, uh, Mr. Congratulations, Bobby. Uh, a great game. I'd like to congratulate both sides on uh, treating us to a great game of football. Really great game. Uh, Bob, there it is. 60,000. Fortunately, it wasn't included in the budget last night, so it's still 60. <laughs> Good luck. Well, thanks very much, Mr. Vincent. I'd like to thank Amico and Channel 10 for making this competition possible. It's a fine event and it can only get better. 
I'd like to get our captain coach up here now, Arthur Beetson. On, be, on behalf of the East players, I'd like to thank Arthur for the efforts that he's put into us throughout the season. He's got us playing the right type of football, obviously, to win this type of game. I'd also like to thank my teammates on a great effort tonight. I'd also like to thank St George. Although losers, they put up a fine effort and played rugby league in the right tradition. Again, I'd like to thank all the supporters for coming along here tonight, and especially the East supporters. Thank you. That's it. That's probably the most popular Quinella in all of Australia, Bobby Fulton and Artie Beetson. Thank you, fellas. Hold it up, please. Hold there you are. Bob, Hold up, good please. man. The boys taking the cup down to the team members of the champion team of East. The uh, winner now of the National Match Award tonight, and more importantly, gaining three points in the Superstar Award, and therefore, more importantly further still, enough points to become the 1978 Singapore Airlines Superstar, and so following the path of Graham O'Grady is Kevin Hastings of East. Top go, Kev. Good boy. There he is. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd ask to come forward uh, Mr. John Pyle, sales manager for Singapore Airlines. The award of three weeks, Kev, on the continent, the United Kingdom and Singapore with Singapore Airlines and the Escape Kings from Air Tours of Australia. Mr. John Pyle. John? Uh, I'd like to thank AMCO, Channel 10, Singapore Airlines and uh, National and also my 12 teammates who played tonight. Thanks very much. Kevin Hastings, superstar, 1978. They didn't have a top game tonight. Good boy, Kev. Uh, Mr. John Pyle, of course, also handed over the award to the tune of $700, the Man of the Match award for tonight for a national. At halftime, ladies and gentlemen, we conducted the drawing of the viewer's prize. That was in the competition of the Volvo Golden Tri Award and announced to our television viewers the player who won that award. Now, the 20,000 people here at Leichhardt tonight and the players involved in the final, of course, you don't know as yet uh, who is the winner of that superb leisure package from Volvo of the Fun Wagon, the Haynes Hunter Runabout, and Volvo Penta Engine with the Tinker Trailer. But the top try, the golden try of 1978, went to Mitch Brennan. As you probably gathered throughout the match, uh, Mitch sustained an injury and unfortunately is not here to accept it in person. But Mitch Brennan, that fleet-footed winger from St George, has taken out the Volvo Golden Try for 1978. And I know that you will never forget that fantastic try of where he bought feet, four defenders and went over, stumbled and then scored it. We've given out the individual awards tonight, but I'm sure that Artie and Bob would agree that it wasn't any just one player but it was all the team of Eastern Suburbs that won the MK Cup for 1978. So I'd ask the boys, if you wouldn't mind stepping on forward to collect your personal medallions, a great taken of tonight. Artie, Bob, if you can lead them forward. And I'd ask Mr. Dick Dunn, Vice President of the New South Wales Rugby Football League, to make the presentation. Bobby Fulton, first of all. Ladies and gentlemen, before presenting the medallions to the boys, 
I congratulate both teams for a magnificent game of rugby league. They showed us tonight how rugby league can and should be played. I'd like to congratulate Eastern Suburb on winning the MCO Cup on the second occasion. Congratulations. Bobby, good work. Great work, son. Kevin, great work, son. Billy, congratulations, mate. Good, congratulations. Roycey, congratulations. Kevin, great win. Arthur, congratulations. Congratulations, Dan Macker. Great game. Congratulations, Russell. Good boy. Congratulations, Bob. Smile, Bob. Congratulations, Bob. Congratulations. Congratulations, Ian. Good boy. Congratulations, son, on a great win. Congratulations. Congratulations, my boy. Congratulations. Congratulations. What about Arthur? Hey, Arthur! I think, uh, Dick... Congratulations, mate. Great work. Dick Dunn and uh, the last recipient, Artie Beetson. And I might mention there are also personal medallions for tonight's token to Jack Dancy standing over there and the two linesmen. You'll be receiving them very, very shortly, Jack. I've uh, just received news that our golden try, the Volvo Penta boy, is... Uh, been brought out from the dressing rooms. Mitch, are you in attendance? I was assured just a few moments ago, and here he comes. The boy who scored the golden try for 1978. What a whopper. Mitch Brennan up on the stage. We thought we'd lost you. Right, Mitch. Ladies and gentlemen, and now to present the award to Mitch, and very deservedly so, John Neville of Volvo. John? It's a good game, Mitch. Thanks a lot, John. Been watching the series really good. It's been tremendous. Beauty. The car's waiting for you. The car's waiting for you out of Volvo. There's a uh, Oswald boat to it with a Volvo fender engine, and we'd love to see you as soon as possible. Terrific. Really. Thanks a lot, John. Good Thanks game. very much. Uh, Thanks a lot to Saints, they're done real good to me. He's a tough now. Mitch Brennan of St George, thank you John Neville of Volvo. That's our presentation at the moment, but I think if you'll clear the passageway over there, Eastern Suburbs would love to do their lap of honour. Would you like to be included now, Art? Whilst they uh, perform that duty, thank you ladies and gentlemen for your attendance. Ray, would you like to take it back in the box? Thank you very much, John. As Eastern Suburbs assemble now to do their victory lap of honour for the second time in the five-year history of the AMCO Cup. Winners in 1975 and as I said during the commentary by far the most successful side that has contested the five-year history of the AMCO. And so Artie Beetson leads his players down through a swarm of uh, youngsters there to greet them as they set off on what might be uh, a rather difficult lap of honour and it leads me into saying thank you to Frank Hyde and Keith Barnes for their uh, co-commentary tonight Keith uh, for everything right through the 1978 Cup a very warm thank you Hi. it's been great Ray and uh, Eastern Suburbs were the champions aren't they they played particularly well this evening and uh, it's a credit to Arthur Beetson and to Frank Hyde it's been an absolute uh, pleasure but more so a thrill to work with uh, the greatest of them all and thank you thank you very much Ray I, I consider it a, a great honor I really do and uh, to see the difficulties under which you work you know it's uh, it amazes me and let me commend you on, uh, on what you've done throughout the years with the MCO Cup because and believe me I, I think you're the only fellow that I know who could do it Frank uh, just going quickly down the statistics the uh, the um, final tally, of course, going to the 
Eastern Suburbs side by a decisive margin. Do you think that they were entitled to win by such a big margin? Uh, yes, I think that right from the start of this game, they put the pressure on. They didn't release it at any stage during the four quarters. They were awarded in the early part of the game by a little bit of enterprise with Bob Fulton's kicking, and uh, they got a lead and hung onto it, and that's what this game is all about. OK, Frank, thank you very much. We'll come back in just a moment with, of course, the all-important draw for the $100,000 Challenge Cup. The Eastern Suburbs team.